Well, you can tell we have an exciting night. You know, 1 John 2 says, The anointing which we received from Him abides in us. But tonight, we abide in Him. Tonight, we are lifting up the name of Jesus. Tonight, we are calling Jesus to come and worship with us. We just say, Holy Spirit, you are welcome here. Holy Spirit, we look to you. We call upon you. We know that you are our strength and our salvation. Welcome, Glad Tidings family. We're just going to take this moment right now, and we're just going to get into this. We're just going to love Jesus. We're just going to tell Jesus how much we love him. Just start using your voice. Just start praising him. Welcome, Holy Spirit. Abide in us, dear God. Abide in us as we abide in you, as we look to you, as we draw to you. We might get raptured here. Just let you know that the presence of God is so incredible in this place. We have prepared a place of our heart and our praise for the King of Kings in this place. Hallelujah. We want to thank everybody for participating in the big surprise for Pastor Kate Gordon. Would you give her another hand? Hallelujah. Isn't that wonderful? That, that was, was so something great. else. Hallelujah. I have with me tonight Pastor Jody Ann, one of our dear deacons from the state of Washington. This humble man served us hand and foot. And together, him and I produced television programs and went around the world. And he's on loan from the state of Washington. He's on loan here. That's all he's right. Gonna Go come. Ahead, give him a hand. That he's going to come. Brother Deacon Jerry's going to come. And uh, he's going to be with us for the week. He'll be here on Sunday. Tell everybody, say, say the B3 and the organ are cool. Come on, somebody. Help me out tonight. The B3 and the organ are cool. They're bling. They're off the road. I'm giving people new terms. They're bad. Oh, I'll get everybody involved. They're groovy. The saxophone is <laughs> of its own. <laughs> the instruments that are pray, played from pure hearts and skillful hands, yes. they call on the presence of God. Yeah. They call on the presence of God. And I heard them open with that historical, just a closer walk with thee. How many could just say, yeah. No, and that's not good enough. Come on, how many can say, yeah? yeah. Let me just, let, Doc, I wish you had your leaders right now. Someone say this, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Say, yeah yeah. yeah, yeah. Come on, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Can, can, I, I'm young. But I, I want to hear Closer Walk With Thee again. Is that all right there, everybody? And yeah. can you just point at them and just tell them, just go ahead and don't behave. Come on, everybody. Do, do not behave. Come on. The, whole, the two of you, go ahead and minister.
Just lift your hands to Him. Hallelujah. He is so good. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. I bless you, Lord. I bless you, Lord Jesus. I glorify your name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We magnify your name. Hallelujah. We put you back in the proper place. Hallelujah. Glory, glory. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Sing unto the Lord a new song. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let the redeemed of the Lord declare your God is King. He is Lord. Hallelujah. Just bless you. Jerry, this is why I came here. You understand now? This is why. I'm so grateful that you have been broken, church. I am so grateful that you were humiliated. I'm so grateful we were at the wit's end because God moves in brokenness. You take a moment right now and for everything that's been unfair in your life, every betrayal, every lie that's been broadcast against you with such a force you thought you'd never recover, the things that have been taken from you, the words that have been spoken against you, you thank God for your brokenness because He inhabits the broken places of our lives. You go back to the nation you came from. You came to this place and they looked at you they looked at you like you weren't even a human being. But God saw you. God recognized you. And his hand is on this house. I want to say to you, you're privileged to be in this house. Uh, it, it took a lot of crushing before God could move in this place. But we're not bragging about glad tidings. We're bragging about the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, we're bragging about his goodness and his mercy in our life. Hallelujah. Oh, don't you dare forget about the three years you couldn't come here. Don't you forget that she couldn't come here. Don't you forget when there was no money and no hope. Don't you forget when you couldn't sleep at night. Don't you forget the shame that came your way. But how many are thankful the anointing covered your shame and healing came into your life? Glory to God. Hallelujah. Here's one thing I do know. This is a house of praise and worship. Not because we sing the best. Not because we hit the best notes. Because we're so grateful. We are so grateful. I had to come. I had no choice. I had no options. Glory to God. And Pastor Jody Ann and I tell you what an honor it is to even grace this pulpit. And I want to make a declaration. You shall see revival. No, somebody in this place, you better hear it right now. You shall see revival. You shall see revival. Revival is taking what God did in the past and making it alive in the present. We shall see revival. And the prophetic flow will flow out of this house and not only this house, across this providence and not only across this providence but the prophetic will flow across this nation somebody help me oh but it will seep over the borders and go into other nations the prophetic will come once again speak thus says the lord from this house and those of you that have been estranged 
some offense has come your way, let it go and you'll get him. If you'll let it go, you'll get him. Would you rather hang on to your hurt, your pain? Would you rather hang on to the glory of the Lord? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I want you to take one moment thank all your enemies for the, all the bad things they did to you. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. Thank God. Hallelujah. For all the crazy things that people did to you. Hallelujah. Because it just pushed you closer to Jesus. Hallelujah. It made you say, God, I can't make it without you. I can't live without you. I can't breathe without you. I can't think straight without you. Hallelujah. You thank that husband that burned you. Come on, somebody. That partner that burned you. That, that financial thing that burned you. Why don't you just take a moment and thank God for it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. All of that caused the apathy to come off you and the hunger for God to come in you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's have a little fun. Someone just thank God for your mother-in-law. Come on, have a little fun, somebody. Just thank God for your mother-in-law. Hallelujah. Glory to God. You came from the depths of the darkness and came your way and pushed you to Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Some of your mother-in-law say, don't marry her, don't marry her, don't marry her. And he's happily married 10 years later. Don't marry her. Hallelujah. Thank God for it. I said, thank God for it. Thank God for what's happened to you. You should have died of cancer, but you didn't. Thank God. Hallelujah. Thank God. Come on, somebody. Thank God for something in your life. Glory to God. Woo. Now, tonight's going to be real good. You hear what I said? Because we got a white boy that's going to bring it tonight. Hallelujah. I'm not worried about your feelings. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We're just going to take the bulldozer tonight and just mow over everything. Hallelujah. But I'm telling you right now, tell Aunt Thelma May. Tell Uncle Wong. Come on, somebody help me. And even tell Hector. Tell Hector you'll get him burritos after service. Hallelujah. Do not miss Sunday. Don't miss it. You can miss the Grey Cup. You can miss the Grand Prix, but don't miss Sunday. Hallelujah. Mask up and pray up. Because God's going to move in this place. Hallelujah. Amen. Help me out. God is going to move in this place. We'll try it again. God is going to move in this place. There's freedom for God to move once again. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.
Hallelujah, Hallelujah. Ila mana ni nama sende, ulama mama ni nana ni nama sende. Hallelujah, 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 Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Praise you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Glory. I want to publicly say how much I admire Pastor Fran Hubert. What a phenomenal woman of God and character. I want to publicly say that we hold you in the highest esteem. There are some tears today, not from a rhythm, not a rhyme, but the legacy of you and your husband shall go on from generation to generation. If the Lord should tarry, the truth shall be told, the obscurity that you and your husband lived in and the sound that came from the two of you that went around the world. It resurrected ministries. It put lives back together because the prophetic is alive. Pastor Hubert's my pastor. And he's my hero. I would not be the pastor of Glad Tidings without Pastor Dave Hubert. He had a prophetic word. And last Sunday would not have happened without Pastor Hubert. Before I was your pastor, I was in his front room, privileged to be there, and he prophesied over me. And he told me prophetically from heaven, honor Pastor Kate Gordon and honor her bones, for her bones represent Dorothy Williams. Her bones represent our founder, Pastor Reg Lizelle. Every great ministry that came out of here her bones represent that. But she's the DNA of this house. And some of you have come from many lands and many places, but now you have an inheritance. When you step into this door, this is no longer a church. This is your church. And every promise that have made over this church is your church. It's your promises. The thus says the Lord now is not someone else's, it's yours. I don't care what your English is. I don't care your size or your color or your background. Everything in this house now. You're no longer foreigners. You're no longer strangers. You're no longer people who are trying to get citizenship. You have a citizenship called glad tidings and the anointing in this house. You have a home. This is your home. We're going to engraft many people, many lonely people, many people who are estranged little Vietnamese girl can hardly speak English and the COVID came and she said I, I can't go back to Vietnam she's lonely we need a house the Bible says he puts the lonely in the house of God some of you made a decision not to live like you were living you were in a loud party but you didn't fit and you came here. I'm going to say this to you. This is your home. I said this is your home. Somebody help me. This is your home. This is your home. And this house will be full of the praises of the Most High God. Don't concern yourself. People are coming. 
I said, people are coming. No, we'll try it again. People are coming. They're coming from every tribe, every background, every people group. I love telling you, there are very, very few Caucasians in this church. So I apologize for my accent. Somebody yell at me tonight. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I hear, I see the glimmer in the eyes of someone who came from China, and they're just learning the language and the glimmer of their eyes, and I say to them, keep speaking. I love to hear the sound of you. Hallelujah. How many love to hear the sounds of the nations and the people? Hallelujah. We're proud of all the backgrounds. We're proud of those from East India. We're proud of those from the Philippines. Someone shout at me. We're proud of those from Malaysia. We're proud of those. We even let Germans come here. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Jerry, they let you in. Do you see why it came? The anointing is in this house. Woohoo! Hallelujah. Would someone point to Deacon Jerry and say, you, you better, you all come back now. Come on, point at him right now. Tell him, you all come back now. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I think it's almost sin not to have a saxophone in church. I need somebody to help me out. My pastor, Pastor Dave Hubert, went to be with the Lord today. Hallelujah. God was merciful. Hear me. Merciful. In the last three months, he began to disintegrate in every way. And that's not what we wanted to see. I went up there 15, 20 times in the last year and a half with my wife. And I would not talk down to him, would not pat him on the hand. I'd go into his front room and I'd say, tell me what the Lord's saying, glory to God. Tell me what you think, glory to God. Hallelujah. God was so good, he got promoted. He got out of this place. Hallelujah. Pray for me, would you? I'm going to have a part in the funeral. Hallelujah. It's going to be a celebration. I said it's going to be a celebration. My spiritual father, my pastor, my hero is with Jesus now. My son, my youngest son, we drove 404 miles to go to his house. Austin said to me, Dad, I, I feel called to the ministry, but I feel called to business. I said, I won't call you to, to the ministry, son. Only God can do that. We're five minutes from Pastor Hubert. My son went down, knelt at his feet. No one heard our conversation, only God. And Pastor Hubert laid hands on the young man and said, I see a Bible in one hand and I see a briefcase in the other. For the Lord would say to you that you are called to full-time ministry and you are called to full-time business. Somebody say, that's a real prophet of God. Only God can know that. And we don't want that to be lost. We don't want it to be lost. We want the prophetic in the house. It will save you years and years and years of wandering and guessing. Hallelujah. We want, how many would stay with me? We want the real back in the house. Hallelujah. Would you do this with me just for a moment? Would you just reach down and pick that up? Keep the real in the house. Hallelujah. Keep the real in your house. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Am I sad? Ah, a little bit. None of you saw me cry tonight. I want to hear that right now. I will hunt you down. Do you understand what I'm talking about? I will find you. I will find you. I don't care where you live or where you at. I no one saw me cry tonight. Hallelujah. And don't think because you're a female, I won't hunt you down. Pastor Jody Ann is a fifth degree black belt. Of course, she has red belts and brown belts, and she has blue shoes. And come on, somebody help me right now. She got this outfit and that outfit. Hallelujah. She's whatever she wants. Well, our very own Pastor Kay Gordon's anointed. She's going to come right now. And we're going to honor the Lord with our tithes and offerings. Pastor Kay Gordon, would you come? Hallelujah. Glory to God.
Well, praise the Lord. The Bible says in all things give thanks. And we are giving thanks tonight. And of course, we are going to feel the loss of, of uh, Pastor Huber. I've known him for 60, 65 years. And, you know, we, but we can't feel that way because he's the winner. He's in heaven. Hallelujah. And they're all rejoicing up there. And uh, I'm sure it's going to be a, a celebration time when all of these that have gone to be with the Lord, especially in recent time, are getting together in the name of the Lord and praising God. Hallelujah. Well, I tell you, it's good to be in the house of the Lord again tonight and to feel the presence of God and that touch of the Lord that makes life so wonderful and uh, a real blessing. And we say a big praise the Lord to all of our family and friends near and far. In many countries of the world, we're so happy that you're able to tune in and be with us in these uh, meetings and God bless you and may the hand of the Lord continue upon you. It's so refreshing to join together to worship our wonderful Lord and Savior Jesus. Amen? Amen. It truly is. Praise God. Well, I'm supposed to take an offering, so I better get on with the job. Uh, in First Chronicles chapter 16 and verse 29, it says, Give to the Lord the glory do his name. Bring your offering and come into his presence. Oh, worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Hallelujah. And we are called into the very presence of God. And with our praise and worship to the Lord, hallelujah, that's our spiritual offering. We come into God's presence and every need is met and there's joy and there's victory. And oh, what a hallelujah time we can have because of the wonderful presence of the Lord. But you know, we don't stop there. And as Christian believers, we are motivated by love for Jesus to do more for the Lord, to give more for the Lord. And so we gladly bring our financial offering here also. And if the ushers can make sure that everybody's got an envelope, we would so appreciate that. Praise the Lord. And uh, we do see in the scripture in Philippians 4 and verse 18, the Apostle Paul is describing our giving to God in a very special way. And he says, it is as a sweet-smelling aroma. Hey, that's better than any cologne you can buy. Hallelujah. You know, colognes come and go, but that sweet aroma of God's presence remains, and it blesses us again and again. He said it's as a sweet-smelling aroma, a sacrifice well-pleasing to God. And do you know tonight, as you have prepared to give to the Lord, uh, whether it's small or great, it's well-pleasing to God. It delights the, the heart of God when his people not only worship him and praise him and give him glory, but also when they prepare to give financially. And uh, also it tells us, um, and I guess it was Paul still speaking, and then he concluded by saying of the great promise that follows. Our giving is like the sweet smell, well-pleasing to God, and with it comes a great promise. Aren't you glad for the promises of God? The Bible says they are yea and amen in Christ Jesus. And God just delights to let his promises 
be effective in our lives and to minister to us. And when we give with our heart full of gratitude, when we give joyfully and thankfully unto the Lord, I'll tell you, God sees it, and he wants to bless you more and meet your every need. And this is the promise that the Apostle Paul followed up with. He said, uh, if, we do the, if we give unto the Lord that sacrifice well-pleasing, then it says, my God shall supply all your needs according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. He shall supply all your needs. And you know he, he is willing to do it and to supply them all simply because he, will, he is now in covenant with you. That as you give to him, he gives to you what you need and the things that, that God uh, will bless. And so we want to give to the Lord tonight. If you have your offering ready, let's just wave it to the Lord. Hallelujah. You know, we can give a wave offering once in a while and say, God bless it and multiply it and may it meet every need in this house. Hallelujah. And also you can uh, just give it for the Lord. So now, uh, ushers, you can go ahead and take the offering, please. And to you that are on online, you can send your gift by e-transfer or you can get an envelope and put an address, Glad Tidings Church, 3456 Fraser Street, Vancouver, B.C., and send it to us that way. Or better yet, you can drop by and, and uh, put it in the deposit box at, at the entrance of the uh, office. So God can bless you in many ways, and we're going to trust that the blessing of the Lord will continue and the goodness of God will be with his people in every way. In Jesus' name, and everybody shouted. Oh, that wasn't good enough. And everybody shouted, Amen and Amen. God bless you. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Pastor Kay. Gordon, stand to your feet tonight in the house of the Lord. It is so good to see you. So Hallelujah. good to see everybody. Hallelujah. Good to see everybody. Hallelujah. How many know that uh, God is behind the scenes? You know, he does things and we don't even see it. Hallelujah. Uh, as you can see, when I was young, I was quite an athlete. Uh, I, 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 I would always play ball with the brothers. And pastor could shoot. I'm telling you, I could shoot. And it just like, they just go, and I'd hit one way out there, three, and they go, hey, good shot, white boy. Good shot. Hallelujah. But why they really liked me is because I passed. I passed. Moved the ball. Hallelujah. Problem was, I stopped growing in the third grade. I need somebody to yell at me right now. I had big plants, but I stopped growing. I, 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 and then when I hit about 25, I didn't grow up anymore. Help me, somebody, you grow out. And so my vertical jump went from about that to somewhere around that. And then I wanted real athletic sons that could be in the NBA. But the problem is I married something like this. I need somebody to yell at me tonight. Go ahead and yell at me, somebody. I married something like this. So I'm out, and she's down here. Say, there ain't no athletes coming from you. Not going to happen. Some of you have been desperate in your life for Jesus to show up. I mean, desperate. You can't get your breath can't even get faith. Can't even pray. You've given up on yourself. Nobody can help you. Everybody is 
stereotyped you and said this about you? Some of you blew it. You couldn't even sin and have fun. But Jesus showed up anyway. He talks and serenades people who do the wrong thing. He even talks to people who have the wrong doctrine. More than anything, we need Jesus to show up. I had a young Ukrainian deacon. He was proud to be a deacon in the church. He had one son. And I swung by his business just to encourage him. He's working hard. Beautiful young man. He said, Pastor, I tell you something, I'm not stealing anymore. Oh, some of you don't even know what I'm talking about, but the rest of you know exactly what I'm talking about because your family's a bunch of thieves. Someone praise the Lord. He said, but something has happened. My only son, my little boy, has a big tumor behind his ear. I looked him in the face. I said, your wife cannot bear this. That's not what a preacher's supposed to say. She cannot bear this. She'll never recover. He must live. Jesus show up. Come on, somebody in this place. Hallelujah. He must live. And Jesus, please show up. We prayed in faith. And I don't want to give you some mysticism. I'm telling you, I sense the anointing of God. And God spoke through me and said, she can't bear this. She can't live through this. He has to live. Not because of me, but because of the Holy Spirit, he grabbed a hold of that and he threw his hands up in front of customers and said, Jesus, show up. Somebody lift their hands with me right now. There's there in your life, Jesus, show up. There's a desperation in your life. Jesus, show up, I can't go on. You're not being weak, you're being honest. God healed that kid. God healed that kid. He was a teenager. He's getting a little mouthy, little, little, little restless. I walked by him. I love the kid. He's a good kid. I said, I shouldn't have prayed for you. Come on, somebody help me in this place. I should not have prayed for you. Smile on his face. See him at camp serving all the little kids, his hands lifted, serving the house of God. He should have been dead, but Jesus showed up. Hallelujah. And a lot of you should have been dead, but Jesus showed up. You didn't want to wake up. You were afraid of God, but you would have killed yourself. But Jesus showed up. I'm going to take a few moments and I'm going to show you in the Word of God. Jesus shows up. But He doesn't do it always the way we think He should. Jesus does not follow my instructions. He doesn't. I, became, I become a mess, uptight, angry, fluctuate from faith to fear. Oh, but he shows up. Hallelujah. I want you just to shout in this house right now, Jesus, show up. Hallelujah. Show up. Hallelujah. Come on, you can do better than that. Show up, Jesus. Show, oh yeah, show up. Glory. Be seated. Worship team, I love you. I love the spirit you carry for the house. Now, John chapter 9 and verse 1. Now as Jesus passed by. <laughs> you think he doesn't notice your situations. Because the Bible says in John chapter 9 and verse 1, he's passing by. He's going somewhere else, doing something else, and he's just going to walk by you. But it says this. He saw a man. It's an interesting word in the Greek. The Old Testament is Hebrew. The New Testament is Greek. 
But this word gives a reference to, he saw every individual, every problem, every situation. So Jesus is walking by, but he what? He saw. Tonight, by faith, I want you to say with me, God sees my problems. He sees them. He saw this man who was blind from birth. No hope for him. He'd never seen what's the use. It's okay to be where you're at. It's okay to be hurt like you're hurt. It's okay because you've never had a real life. His dumb disciples, it does not say that in the Greek. That is pastor shot. His dumb disciples asked him, saying, Rabbi. Now they're always flattering him, calling him a high position, philosopher, great teacher, Rabbi. It's one of the few places in the Bible they call him Rabbi. Who sinned, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? Now here's where you're at. You think it's this or that. I'm going to say this to you. Often it's neither. It's neither. Well, I blew it here. That's why my life's this way. No. No. He said, who sinned? Jesus answers, neither. This man or his parents sinned. But the works of God should be revealed in him. Hear this tonight. Your problem is an opportunity for the work of God to take place in your life. You're going to resist this tonight, but I want you to take one moment and thank God for your problem. Let's try that again. There's nobody in here that didn't come in with some problem. But I want you to thank God for it. Just take a moment and thank God for your problem. Come on, somebody. Thank God for your problem. Don't look at your husband. Look straight ahead at pastor. Thank God for your problem. I don't want to thank God for my problem. But God says this. Look at his promise. He says this. My power is going to come in this situation. How many want to know Jesus more? Let me see your hand. Do you want to know Jesus more? Well, you know Jesus more by him coming into your messes and solving your problems. So he said, it's not his parents. It's not him. But I'm going to get involved when Jesus shows up. Here I'm a young preacher and God tricked me. Said, I I don't want you to be in a denomination and I want you to go start, start this church. So we rented this little gymnasium. I'm telling you, nobody came. My mom even missed services. And because I obeyed God, I thought everybody's going to come. And just the opposite. And I thought about I could have a parking spot. I could have been in that denomination and drove a Cadillac. I, 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 I could have had a building and an office. Now I'm in a stinky gymnasium where the toilet flows over and nobody comes. Say with me, hallelujah. Come on, everybody say it, hallelujah. And a lot of you have some half-hearted hallelujahs in your life. Because you said, I obeyed God, therefore this will happen. I want to say this to you, neither. God had to break Joseph to make Joseph. I was unusually handsome. It can't be that silent here. Use your imagination when you look at me, would you? I had a blue suit from Nordstrom's, black wingtip shoes. Oh, yeah. Red tie, and I, I, could, I could preach and sing a little bit, and I'm doing all kinds of conferences, and I'm the man, and now I'm in a gymnasium, and nobody's coming. And I began to be just kind of be mad at God. God, I am so, so wonderful. I'm so good-hearted. I, I just want, I want to please you as long as you do what I want you to do. What is wrong with everybody tonight? I'm preaching tonight. Someone say, don't act like you, your little halos. No, no, what's happening is you have a halo, but the horns are coming up and pushing it over. 
Every one of us have this. We have, is it this or this? Say it, neither. Neither. Without that failure and that brokenness, I couldn't be here. Without nothing happening in my life and nobody wanted to hear me and nobody wanted me as their pastor, then my voice wouldn't have went around the world because I wasn't broke enough. And God brought me down to the lowest point. And this is a horrible place to be. All I had was Jesus. That's all I had. And I'm going to say this tonight. When you have Jesus, you have everything. When you have Jesus, you're the richest person in the world. Your business is failing and everything's coming against you. Your partners and your suppliers lied to you. They stole from you. People have betrayed you. Hallelujah, you're in a good place. All you have is Jesus. Say it with me tonight, Jesus, show up. Come on, say it, Jesus, show up. God, I need you to show up. I don't know if I'd want to be a deacon for me. Can I tell you another deacon that I had? My head deacon, one of the most wonderful, loving men you'd ever know. I made him the head of all the deacons. I get a phone call. He had a massive stroke. He's clinically dead at the hospital. If I ask you to be a deacon, I want you to really pray about it. One son had a tumor behind the ear. Come on, somebody, help me right now. And the other one's dead. He's clinically dead. I meet his wife. They're crying. The kids are all crying. I just didn't sense he was supposed to die yet. Now, I've had some deacons I've wanted to kill. But this one, I just, I didn't, and I looked at his wife, and I didn't say a word to her, and she says, Patty, I just don't feel like he's supposed to die. I said to myself, well, you wanted to kill him five years ago. What, what, what changed? <laughs> what changed in your heart here? And I said, everybody come in there. Let's just pray in tongues. And let's just thank God that Jesus is going to show up. And he opens his eyes. And his body begins to change supernaturally. I want somebody to say, Jesus, show up. When you're at the worst place and everything is against you, all you need is Jesus to show up. And God began to heal him. And through the night, everything went off him. The stroke, everything went off him. He had one thing that was very fascinating. His right hand had a paralysis. And it took him six months to just do exercise to work his hand out. And I said, Lord, you're the healer. How come that took place? I wanted that paralysis to remind him that it was me that raised him from the dead. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I know it's Wednesday night, but I'm telling you, you got a preacher in the house. Someone shout me down. Hallelujah. What you need in this place is you need Jesus to show up in your marriage. You need Jesus to show up in your work. You need Jesus to show up in your school. You need Jesus to show up in your finances. Some of you in your crazy head, you need Jesus. Jesus answered, neither. But I'm going to show my works in your life. Quit looking at your problems as you being broken the rest of your life. Look at your problems. Jesus is going to show up. And then God just does so unorthodox. Now, I went to some Bible school. I went to some Bible school. You know, I, I got a master's degree in Bible. I learned some things about the Bible. But I never had a class where they gave me some dirt and I spit in it. <laughs> I never had a class where I just... And I just stirred it and stirred it. I never ever had a, a spit class. <laughs> if you don't think I'm funny, I enjoy myself. Come on, everybody. I thoroughly enjoy myself. If I could right now, I'd just stand up here and hug me. When he had said these things, look at verse 6. He spat on the ground and made clay out of a saliva. Look how crazy this word is. He anointed the eyes of the blind man with clay. Did you know there can be anointing in your spit? There can be an anointing in your clay? 
There can be anointing in the most ridiculous things in your life. And God can anoint your mess, your dirt in your life. He called the spit and the clay, it was anointed. I want to say this to you tonight. Your lowest point, God's anointed it. Your brokenness, God has anointed it. The dirt in your life, God's anointed it. The betrayal in your life, God's anointed it. I want somebody in this place to say, God, I thank you for spitting at me. Hallelujah. I thank you for wiping things in my face. Hallelujah. Craziest thing. Had one family in the church when we started this dumb church. I'm trying to think of a name of it. Dumb, dumb. Christian fellowship. Had one family. I worked at Nordstrom's. I tithed. And I had one family. And they loved me. And they said, we're called of God to financially support you, Pastor. We're going to give a third of all we make to get behind you because we believe in you. And he comes to me a year later and said, Pastor, we're in total submission. My wife's father was a pastor for years. He's had a stroke. They want us to move to California, but we're not doing it because we want to be with you. <laughs> they gave 60000 that year, and the total church giving was 68000 Come on, somebody help me. And my flesh said, yeah, you're right. You need to stay here with me and suffer. <laughs> this dumb church called Dumb Dumb Fellowship. The Holy Spirit spoke to me. See, Jesus shows up. He showed up. He said, Vince, they were faithful to me and faithful to you. Now you be faithful to them and you send them and bless them right now. Don't think about it. God, how do I know this is you? Because you don't want to do it. <laughs> Gary and Rianne Paris, I put my hands. I said, come here. I love you, kids. They were 25 years older than me, but they're all kids. And I said, go in the anointing of God with my blessing. You see, that was a dirty mess. That was a dirty mess. Do you know the next year we were given a $3 million building? I want somebody to shout in this place. No, 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 you better do better than that. I want somebody to shout in this place. Someone praise God. How could we go? I was settling for this, but Jesus spit on the situation, and he turned the, my mess into a miracle. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. When he said these things, he spat on the ground made clay with the saliva and anointed the eyes of the blind man with clay. And he said to him, go wash in the pool of Shalom, which is translated sent. So he went, he washed, and he came back seeing. We'll try that again. So he went and he washed and he came back seeing. Do I need to do it again? Hallelujah. When God tells you to do something, even though you have a mess, I'm telling you tonight, when God talks to you in your mess, when it seems like he doesn't care about you, when there's dirt on your face and saliva, when God tells you to do something, you do it because you're going to come back blessed. You're going to come back sing. You're going to come back healthy. God's going to turn it around. Therefore, the neighbors and those who had previously had seen the blind man said, Is this not he who sat and begged? Others said, It looks like him. Therefore, they said to him, How were your eyes opened? He answered and said, a man called Jesus. Oh, somebody shout in this place tonight. A man called Jesus showed up. How? You were so down and so hurt, Jesus showed up. 
I want to declare this. Jesus has showed up again at glad tidings. He's mighty and being lifted up and being praised in the proper places and blessings are coming down and God's drawing people to the anointing that's in this house because Jesus. Well, Pastor Shock, you're a really good preacher, you know, especially for an American. You preach a little African American, a little you preach a little black being a white guy, that's really good to have, you know. Very few White brothers can gravy. Some of you don't even know what a gravy is. How many, how many want to hear what a gravy is? Hallelujah. A gravy. White guys can't do this, but yeah. Come on, somebody. Huh? All I know is this man named Jesus made clay. He had anointed my eyes, and he said to me, go to the pool. So watch what it says. So I went. So I went, I want to say this tonight. We need some crazy faith. No, we need, we need some crazy faith. God's been stirring in your heart in this mess called COVID about starting a new business, and you're thinking about, I can't afford this and I can't afford that. You're going to be poor the rest of your life unless you obey what God tells you to do. Some of you, God's been telling you, start tithing. You don't tithe, and God's been telling you, you know what? You can't get any poorer than you are. Help me somebody in this place. You can't get any poorer than you are. You're the poorest person in this church. When they're handing out the food last Sunday, you didn't lie, but you took two. But Jesus is showing up. I said Jesus is showing up. The doctor has no answer, but Jesus is showing up. We had a beautiful little girl. Her name was Amber. Her real name is Mooney. How many know dads have the right to name your kids something else, even though they have a legal name? <laughs> she would have the nightmare temperatures. Nightmare. We were mentally, emotionally tormented by her sickness. Her temperature <laughs> would shoot up so high so quick is at the place where they lose brain cells. That's what happened to her, by the way. That's what happened to her. That's where her brain cells went. Some of you had real heat flashes when you were young, and that's where your brain cells went. And Jody Ann and I said, Jesus, show up. And Jody Ann has a unique way when things go wrong. Honey, pray. 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 Pray, call out to Jesus. A little girl with ponytails all the time and just beautiful. She was miserable. She never had a night's sleep. She'd scream in the night. So we prayed. Say it with me, Jesus shows up. Say it again, Jesus show up. No, no, say it better than that, Jesus show up. You've got a situation where you don't have an answer. No doctor has an answer. No counselor has an answer. But Jesus has an answer. Jody Ann's watching TV. And this person comes on out of nowhere and says, you know, a lot of children are allergic to milk. And right then, God spoke to my wife. Get Mooney off milk. Get Mooney off milk. She calls me. Jody Ann says, God, talk to me. I said, well, what, what did he say? He told me to get Mooney off milk. Say this with me. Saliva and dirt. You better hear this tonight. God will give you a saliva and dirt answer, and he'll anoint the saliva and the dirt. It doesn't make any sense. Yep. Jody Ann got got little Amber off this thing. She didn't have a fever again. Instantly, her, her body was fine. I still think it did some brain damage, but we'll share with that another. Come on, somebody. You can laugh about your kids a little bit. How many have some kids that, that you wish you, they said they had a brain injury? How many? Come on, help me right now. And they didn't, but they act like they did. <laughs> then they said, Well, where is he now? He said, I don't know. So 
So they brought him to the Pharisees. I want to say this to you right now. They brought the ex-blind man to the Pharisee. Religion always wants to take away the credibility and the praise that belong to God. Always. They're saying to you today, after you get your miracle, don't give praise to God. We have churches full in America and Canada that are no longer praising God for the miracle of the spit in the dirt. We need some people right now, you know God intervened on your behalf. You need to praise him in the sanctuary. You need to thank God Almighty for what he did to you, hallelujah. He stepped in when there was no answer for you and all of a sudden the church lost its praise. Oh, then they get really tricky. Now, it was the Sabbath. Huh. What? Well, we can't have people speaking in tongues and delivered and following the Spirit on Sunday morning because we have guests. We'll have special service. But we, we can't have a move of God on a Sunday morning, so what we have is we have funeral parlors called church. Oh, help me somebody. I'm gonna amen myself. No, we're gonna shout and praise God Sunday morning. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We're gonna shout out the worship team and don't let, even let them hear their monitors. Come on somebody, glory to God. He said to them, he put clay in my eyes and now I can see. Verse 17, is he a prophet? But the Jews did not believe concerning him that he had been blind and received his sight until they called his parents. And they asked him, saying, Is this your son who you say was born blind? How then does he now see? His parents answered. And they said, You know this is our son, that he was born blind. But by what means now do we know him? Because they feared the Jews. And they'd be put out of the religious circle. They said this, verse 23, he's of age. What? Some of you are here and your parents have thrown you under the bus. Because of your love for Jesus, they've cut you off. Your family's cut you off. People have cut you off. And they're saying you're of age. We don't want any part in this discussion. We don't want to lose our dignity. I'm going to ask you tonight as we close, how many here will lose your dignity for Jesus to show up? I said, somebody here, you don't need no music. You'll lose your dignity for Jesus. He'll heal your mind and level your life and intervene on your behalf. Somebody stand to your feet in this place and begin to thank God because I'm telling you there is spit and dirt coming on the house, hallelujah, and Jesus is going to anoint the most unusual things, the most unusual situations. God Almighty is begin to bring an anointing on people's life. How many need Jesus? I said, how many need Jesus? No, how many need God to show up and show off on your behalf? Whew. One thing I do know, I was blind and now I see. Uh, one thing I do know, I was addicted. I had a smile, I did it legally but I was addicted to prescription drugs, but now I'm not. All I know is God, Jesus showed up. 
All I know, it didn't matter what I did, what pill I took, I couldn't get level. And all I know, I've got the joy of the Lord. Hallelujah. All I know is I was lonely and broken, and God brought the right man in my life. Hallelujah. All I know is my teenagers were in trouble. Now they're not in trouble because Jesus showed up. Somebody in this place begin to praise him and thank him that Jesus showed up. Come on, praise him for what he's done in your life. Thank you, Jesus. Can I pray for our family online for a moment? Would you join me in prayer? Father, unusual miracles, unorthodox ways show up in these beautiful people's lives. Father, broken pastors have had a group of people talk bad about them, and they feel smothered by the voices of the opinion of the Pharisees. Father, bring to them the greatest people they've ever imagined do miracles in their life right now. Father, I pray for the beautiful people that don't know how they're going to make ends meet. God, I thank you. You're speaking to kings on their behalf. Glory to God. And he's going to speak to someone for no good reason. He's going to give you a hand. We believe it in the name of Jesus. Favor is coming your way. Those of you that just can't settle, you're unstable in your mind. You're unstable in your emotions. In the name of Jesus, I declare the Prince of Peace to be on your life right now. And Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Oh, say his name, Jesus. Uh, say his wonderful name, the name that's above every name. God, I pray you would just show up in our lives, in our circumstances. We thank you. We bless you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. We receive this word. Do it your way. Do it how you want to do it. Because all I know, I was blind. But now I can see. Would you give the Lord a hand clap tonight? Hallelujah. Come on, give them better than that. Praise the Lord, everybody. Hallelujah. Well, let's celebrate out of this house. Can we celebrate? Hey, everybody, how many will invite Deacon Jerry back on Sunday? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Joe McDonald, I think you found a brother from a different mother. <laughs> the two of you, wow. Glory to God. Let's worship. Planted in the house of the Lord, you'll flourish in the courts of our God.